Hi, winners. Welcome back to another episode of Win a Pageant. I'm your host, Alicia Darby. In today's episode, we are going to discuss something that is absolutely key to beauty pageants, and that is beauty. Now, one of my pet peeves about the pageant industry is that oftentimes beauty is misassociated with appearance. Now, this is something that's cultural, really isn't specific just to the pageant industry, but this really happens like across the board in so many, so many, so many different areas that people typically think of beauty and they immediately associate it with appearance. But today I wanted to debunk the myth that you have to be beautiful. That was in air quotes because I really don't believe you have to be beautiful in order to win and especially not to compete in a pageant. And here's why. I wanna share with you the definition of beauty. This comes from the very important source of Wikipedia. And it says, beauty is a characteristic of a person, animal, place, object, or idea, so a noun, that provides a perceptual experience of pleasure or satisfaction. And then it goes on to say that the experience of beauty often involves an interpretation of some entity as being in balance and harmony with nature, which may lead to feelings of attraction and emotional well-being. Ah, I just love that concept, emotional well-being, because it's really taking the concept of beauty and it's saying, now what does really beauty do to the people that are surrounded by that beauty? So I wanna dissect this with you a bit um, to help you understand, because don't be confused that beauty pageants are not won through beauty. In fact, they are, but they are not necessarily won through appearance. They are in fact more won by that natural beauty, that perceptual experience of pleasure and satisfaction. So how, when you're competing in a pageant, can you really bring across this level of beauty? So when I work with my clients, we talk a lot about, I mean, first of all, let me just say, we do talk a lot about their appearance, right? We talk about how they can have the right wardrobe. We talk about how they can have, you know, their their best hairdo and great makeup and things like that. We do talk about physical appearance. We do, okay? Because let's face it, oftentimes physical appearance also has a connection to the emotional experience that someone has. But you may have heard before that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And this definition totally proves that because it's the perceived experience that someone else has that they decide whether or not they claim that that noun, that person, place, thing, idea, object, whatever, is beautiful. So when I train with my pageant girls, the thing that I am teaching them is to pay attention to how they're being perceived by those around them. Now, I learned this growing up because my parents both worked in education. My dad was a principal, my mom a school teacher, so I would frequently go to the events at their school, even from like being a small child, all the way growing up, and because teaching is what we would consider a fishbowl profession, meaning they have a lot of eyes on them, you know, you hear teachers in the news all the time for one little thing that's less left of center, they get jumped all over, right? It's, it's a fishbowl profession in that everyone's watching your life. The same is true in pageantry. People are really watching to see how you conduct yourself. They're watching to see how you communicate. They're watching to see how you put yourself together. And so if they are watching you and they perceive you and they have an experience with you that's pleasurable and satisfactory, then they'll describe you as beautiful. Now for women, this is something that is particularly important because we have, I, I, I read this book um, by Stacey Eldridge. John and Stacey Eldridge are in ministry and they talk often about relationships. So they talk about how men pursue women and how women strive to be beautiful. And one of the concepts that they discuss in their book, Captivating, which oh, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing book. I truly believe every woman and every mother and father ought to read this book. If you are mother and or fathering a small girl, please read this book. It really gives insight into that quest for beauty. So inside of us, we have this like innate desire to feel beautiful. And what does that really feel like? I want to share with you this quote from Stacy's book because it's awesome. I read it probably about six months ago or so. I read it both on audiobook and I bought the actual book because I was like listening to it in the car, but then I wanted to come home and continue reading. So this quote, which I, goodness, I just think it's beautiful. She's describing how 
feminism and how beauty and how women as beauty are is very similar to nature, which as we read in the Wikipedia definition, also very similar. Nature is not primarily functional. It is primarily beautiful, which is to say beauty is in and of itself a great and glorious good, something that we need to enlarge in daily doses of. Ah, I love it. Daily doses of beauty. Ladies, I am like speaking to you right now because we do need really daily doses of beauty. And that beauty is the perceived experience of satisfaction and enjoyment, okay? So in your pageant, here's what I want you to consider. When you are on stage, uh, this the, the closest example that I have of this that you can probably relate to is when you see, uh, for example, if you've seen like Cirque du Soleil, an amazing performance, you're just sitting ah in awe of them and they're swooping around and you're like, you're like, oh my, that person's flying across stage or they're contorting themselves or they're, you know, some big thing like drops out of the ceiling, like these, this rope or something, you know, they're just going to swing around all over it, whatever. But Cirque du Soleil is a prof- it's so professional. You don't worry about it, right? You're sitting in enjoyment. You are still amazed and enjoying the experience and, and it's fun. And, and you know, you might be like, wow, that kind of experience. But have you ever seen an amateur performance of any kind? Like, for example, bad high school cheerleading or horrible dance performances or really not so great Cirque performances, right? When you're watching performers like this, even like small children, I know I have felt this before where I'm watching a performance that isn't going ideally. The whole time I'm like, oh, 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 oh no, ah, yikes, oh, ooh, yikes, oh, I hope she doesn't fall. And I'm thinking in my head like, oh my goodness, oh, oh, are they going to catch her? And you, it's like I'm cringing the whole time, right? And it's like a terrible experience because the whole time my cortisol levels are like all over the place. And in those moments, it is not necessarily a satisfactory and enjoyable experience. It's really more terrifying. When you're on stage as a pageant contestant, it is truly your job to carry yourself with calmness, with grace, with confidence, and here's and all of those things will make your audience really just feel like, ah, you know, that sense of peace that's enjoyable that you feel when you're at a Cirque du Soleil performance or someone that's an absolute professional. And the final component that I would encourage you to deliver from your stage performance and from communication and there are a variety of other ways that we can communicate is simply love. When you are communicating love to someone else, you're doing it in a way that you want them to hear. You want them to pick up on it. You want them to know they're loved, right? When you're communicating love, you're doing it in a way that's through somebody else's perspective. If you've had an experience of love before, or if you've demonstrated love before, which I'm sure you have, think about how you've done that act. You know, you've thought, you've thought through a kind gift that you want to give somebody, you know, something that's going to be really, really thoughtful, something that's going to encourage their journey or something that's going to make them feel loved. And so you think about it from their perspective and you try to make it awesome so that they really, really feel that love. When we think about an experience from somebody else's perspective, that's where your beauty shines out. That's why they talk about inner beauty and outer beauty. Oh, she's beautiful on the outside and on the inside. You know what they're really saying is that inner beauty, that thing that you've got that you can really just showcase awesomeness to the person that you're speaking to. That's beauty because you are giving them an experience that they can rest in just like nature. So when you think about um, going, going to see a gorgeous sunset, you know, the home that I live in right now, I have this gorgeous view of a beautiful sunset and I love watching the sunset because it's beautiful. It's satisfactory and enjoyable experience. I just want to like sit there in awe, you know, I just feel like this is God's way of flirting with me. You know, he's showing me his love. He's showing me that beauty through a sunset. And I really, really feel that way, you know, and it's absolutely beautiful. Maybe you've had experience before where you've tasted a meal and it's, oh, melt in your mouth. So darn good. And your reaction just might be, "Mm, that was beautiful. You know, it's very, very possible that you can relate this element of beauty in all areas of your life. So when you are on stage competing in a pageant, 
when you are at an appearance where you're working with other people, when you are in your interview room, all of these times, I want you to think about how can you deliver a pleasurable experience to those around you? It isn't easy to do. I'm just going to say that it isn't easy to do. You truly, it's easy for people who have it flowing through you. You know, if you just have a beautiful life and you're constantly joyous and you're celebrating things and you're celebrating other people and you're filled with love, woo, it's easy to pour it out in that case. It's not so easy to do when you're filling yourself up with bitterness, right? It's just not. What you put in is what you get out. So what I want you to do is really consider how can you become beauty? How can you share a joyous experience and something lovely with your judges on stage? Because that, ladies, is how you win a pageant. Thank you so much for joining me today. I cannot wait to see you next time on Win a Pageant. To learn more and to get valuable resources to help you win, visit winapageant.com. I'm Alicia Darby, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching that last video. If you totally loved it and got something from it, would you just click subscribe right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel? Hey, I am here for you, and I've got so many more trainings and videos for you. In fact, this one would be a really great one to watch next. Or if that topic doesn't interest you, then try this one. It's my most recent video training. So I think both of these would be really great for you. Thank you again so much for subscribing. I am honored to be your coach. I'll see you again soon.